Doug, trade deadline has come and gone now in the National Hockey League. Another busy day for fans. It's an intriguing day and a fun day for players. Uh, it can be a stressful day for management. It's a, a day where opportunity is there, but also patience. Uh, how would you assess, just before we talk about specific deals, the overall trade day for the St. Louis Blues? Well, I'd say it's probably more stressful for players than enjoyable. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's a tough day, obviously. You're, you're trying to improve your team, but you're dealing with people that you have a, a relationship with over time. And, uh, uh, but ultimately, the job responsibility of the hockey operations area is to give ourselves the best opportunity. And I think bringing in the three uh, players that we brought in today makes us a little stronger and a, a little tougher to play against maybe, and, and certainly up front uh, with Jokin and a lot more experienced. What were you looking for going into this whole process? And we say trade deadline day, but let's say it's, it's a whole series of days and weeks and months even leading up to it. Well, what did you really think is uh, uh, the key to success for the St. Louis Blues in any moves that would be made? Well, initially we wanted to improve the right side of our defense and in the sense we want to right shots. Uh, we've had a lot of success uh, with uh, three righties, three lefties. Uh, this year I think the guys have done a great job, but we've, we've obviously only had two righties and four lefties. So uh, the two trades today brought in two right-handed defensemen. I think it now gives us... Uh, with uh, the, the maturation of Lindbaum, we have nine NHL caliber defensemen ready to go when Shattenkirk gets healthy. So that bodes well for a long playoff run. And uh, uh, we get a guy it's in uh, Mikhailik that's played against the other team's top players for a number of years. Uh, he's not. Uh, he's always accustomed to seeing Taves and Kane and uh, the better players. So uh, I think he's going to come in here and have an opportunity to to fill that void that maybe we had, and I think he could be a very good partner for, for Jackman or whoever the, the coach decides to use him with. Well, let's start with the, the first trade, trade trade that was announced earlier today. Zabinik McCulloch comes in. Now, he's dealing with an injury uh, still, so how does a deal like that come about, and then now what is the process moving forward? So that brain that you gave me, was it Hans Delbrooks? No. Ah, good. Uh, would you mind telling me whose brain I did put in? And you won't be angry? I will not be angry. Abby someone. Abby someone. Abby who? Abby normal. Abby normal. I'm almost sure that was the name. <laughs> Are you saying that I put an abnormal brain into a seven and a half foot long, 54 inch wide gorilla? What? Is that what you're telling me? Wait, wait. Uh, head injuries are always a, an issue, and uh, so we got ourselves some protection. Uh, the tune-off was pick 51 last year. Connect We've gotten uh, a, uh, Arizona's third-round pick, which is more than likely 61 through 63. So we're willing to abs absorb that 10 or 11 spot drop if he doesn't play any games for us. But our, obviously we're doing this trade hoping that he plays games for us. Well, and I know he, he did talk to Chris Raby earlier. He was slated to skate today in Arizona. He's hoping when he gets into town that he can skate. So is that an encouraging development? just even moving forward right off the bat? Well, I, I was aware that, it, that he had, what he was doing uh, over the last week through Don Maloney and uh, uh, the exercise that he's done. He's had no complaints today. He's going to get on the ice. So when I talked to him today, tomorrow's a day off for our players, but he wanted to get in tonight. He wants to get on, he wants to get on the ice. And uh, uh, we're going to be obviously uh, uh, very conservative in getting him into the lineup. We're hoping to play. Uh, deep into the spring, and we, when he gets in there, we want him in there to stay in there. All right, let's move on to the next trade that came about, and that was the moving of Ian Cole to Pittsburgh, and you get a player in a Robert Bortuzzo back. Uh, what are the keys to this deal? Well, again, another right shot defenseman for the immediate help with Shattenkirk and, uh, and Mikhailik out. That's certainly going to help us. It gives us a, a different look back there, a little uh, more abrasive player, and uh, it also gives uh, Ian a, a fresh look in... Uh, he came to me on a couple of occasions this year asking that if his, his uh, you know, I think his, his desire to play more wasn't going to fit in this organization. He has to be moved. So it was one of those trades, I think, that worked out for everybody. It gives Ian a fresh start. 
Uh, I want to thank him, and I think he's handled everything so so well uh, over the last couple of years. And uh, it's just a, a good opportunity for, for Ian. And we get a, a different dynamic of a player. I, I love our top four when they're healthy. They're skilled. They're skilled uh, assets that they bring. And having a little nasty back there won't hurt us. How important on deals like this are the late round picks that get included in there? Uh, if you look at the history of the draft, really not that important. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, you, but you always love to have them because every once in a while, whether it's every five years, eight years, ten years, one of these guys actually makes it and, and plays well for you. So you try and get them tossed in there and you try not to give them out. Uh, but uh, the, the, the likelihood of success isn't great, uh, but we do scout for a reason and we do have those number of rounds for a reason and you like to have picks. Okay, so now in those first two deals that we talked about, you bring in a couple of defensemen, you wait for Shattenkirk to get healthy, and you hope that that progresses well. You wait for Zabinik McCulloch to get healthy. Lindbaum has come in and played very well in, in, in filling in and really looks like he fits in the National Hockey League. Chris Butler is here. How does that depth on defense get handled? Well, that's obviously up to the coaches, but uh, uh, the rule of thumb is if you expect and, and, and your desire is to play into uh, May and June, you probably need an NH a nine NHL caliber defenseman. I think that's what we have. Uh, obviously, there's going to be hurt feelings on a nightly basis if everybody's healthy, but that, that's an issue for the players and the coach to deal with. As a manager, uh, if we do have sustain an injury or if there's poor play, uh, the coach has a few bullets he can use uh, if necessary. All right, I, I know we're here to talk trades, but uh, with the defense topic being there, what has really impressed you about Pateri Limbo? I think just how quickly he's adjusted. Well, obviously, coming into training camp, uh, uh, we were going to play him in Traverse City and then send him right back, and he looks so good in Traverse City. We asked him if he wanted to stay a couple of weeks at camp, and then each game he looked very comfortable and then uh, asked him to sp spend the year here, knowing that he would be in Chicago, and he felt he was close to, to this level. Uh, when I see him up here, he plays with a little bit of edge. Uh, he he doesn't pick any favorites on who he goes after on the other team, which is a nice thing. He's got a little bit of size, and uh, I just the vision of him on our team moving forward uh, for years to come is there, and I think all the experience he's getting now is very helpful, uh, but he can always go back and, and uh, play a lot in the American Hockey League if he needs to this year. Okay, and the other trade that, that you made today was acquiring Ole Jokinen from the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, he started the season with the Nashville Predators, was eventually traded to the Toronto Maple Leafs. You bring him back into the Central Division there. In making the move, you give the Toronto Maple Leafs Joachim Lindstrom and a pick. Uh, how did this trade come about, and, and what do you see the impact being? Well, it started when uh, uh, Jokinen got to Toronto, and, and Dave Nonis uh, uh, talked to him, and, and he said he really would like to move on to maybe a team, uh, to a contending team. Uh, and Dave, t true to his word, told him he would, he would do that. Uh, for us, when I, when I look at our 12 forwards, I really like our top nine now, and I like our fourth line, but that experienced player that can move up into our nine, we might not have. Uh, so uh, I think Porter's uh, obviously a very good player, and, and he can he fulfills a role for us. But Jokinen's experience playing uh, a lot of minutes and also playing in the top nine is something that we didn't have. So I just got off the phone with him. Uh, he's very excited, and uh, he said, it's, uh, now we know what it's like to win the lottery. So obviously he's, he's excited about the opportunity to play in the playoffs. And where he's at at his age and his career, his, his main goal is to win a Stanley Cup. And he said, whether, whether I'm a healthy scratch uh, every once in a while or whether I'm playing every night, you're going to get everything that I have. And that's the attitude we want to have around here. <laughs>